Hey everyone, I am Mark with On The Wrong Lead, and we had a crazy week in the world of On The Wrong Lead. Uh, we couldn't align schedules, uh, everything was all messed up, and uh, we, we didn't end up live streaming on our Thursday night. But it is the closing weekend of the Saratoga meet. Uh, there are three graded stakes on the Saturday card, and I thought it would be remiss to not at least touch on them. So I'm going to try a little bit of a different format. Uh, and, uh, you know, please tell me if you like this. Give me some feedback on, on this little bit more stakes focused featured action. And because uh, I'd, I'd love to hear the feedback if people really enjoy this. So, uh, first off, we're going to talk about the Prioress. Uh, grade three going six furlongs. This for three-year-old fillies this division is just not the strongest this year uh and i really think this race kind of begins and ends with your uh with your feelings on the seven too sharp for phil bauer maiden breaker but last out extremely impressive she won by 11 and a quarter um and kind of did everything right she shows up in this spot she's the kind of the lone speed in this race she should get really super loose once again um and, and i think she's going to be really tough in here she She's a likely single in this pick five sequence, or at least a lone A if you're uh, somebody who wants a little bit more coverage. Um, I, I think she, uh, you know, Phil Bowers, you know, barn has been absolutely on fire, hitting at 43%, and he's good with these, uh, you know, maiden breakers last out right back. Now, this is a really tough test. She goes out of a, you know, maiden break last time right into stakes company. And that's, that's always a tough ask, but, uh, you know, I, I think given the controlling speed, given her run style, I think she's, uh, she's pretty you know going to be pretty darn tough in here two others I was interested in. Uh, one is Carmelina coming off a real nice win at Colonial. If you believe the figure in that Colonial race, she may really you know fit here kind of okay. Uh, she's 10-1 on the morning line. Robert Reed doesn't have a win on the Saratoga meet, but he normally gets one. Uh, wouldn't be a shocker here. She's been in uh, you know you know in pretty tough company. Um, you know facing some decent horses. So uh, you know this field did not come up the saltiest. So she, she's an interesting player on that kind of you know, off the pace, more stalking sort of trip. Um, other horse I was a little interested in here was Tricky Temper for Jeremiah Engelhart. Uh, Engelhart Barn has been hot all meat. She's won her last two. She's getting, uh, you know, a step up in here, stepping out of the state bred restricted ranks. Uh, but she is three for six across the Saratoga circuit. So you know, know she likes to trip. She likes to surface. Uh, it's just sort of, is she good enough versus these better horses? Uh, and obviously Dylan Davis takes the mount. Uh, years prior, that was, that was not a move up. But with how Dylan's riding right now, he's arguably the best jock on the ground so uh riding very well and he still is not getting the respect on the board so a seven to two morning line might hold uh so those are the two that i'd be a little bit interested in using underneath or on you know a little bit more extensive deeper plays race 11 is the spin away uh you know this is this two-year-old stakes racing at saratoga always a big thing um this is the one for the phillies and you know or the, the final one for the phillies i should say there's a lot in here and these races are always you know always tough i think we kind of have to begin with talking about the queen's mg she won the schuylerville she won the adirondack uh you know and she won the adirondack in very very impressive form uh winning by nine lengths she's a major player in here no matter how you shake it so uh you know i, I think for me she's probably a lone a um after completely getting disregarded in the schuylerville but you know she has shown through her career that uh she can just kind of toss a clunker so you know i don't know if it was the break at the or you know the break where she got kind of beaten up getting out of the gate in the astoria um and or if she just maybe was a little green and just kind of didn't handle the tough going this field is, is tougher and what you always run into with these horses that sort of they sort of show up early in the year um and then everybody else kind of you know catches up with them they're they're real precocious to start and then the rest of the you know the horses out there really start to catch up and that may happen with the queen's mg the biggest thing that scares me is that she's basically run the same figure the last two races so she's gonna get bet on the you know connection she's gonna get bet on the fact that she's won the last two but there's other in here who have technically run faster at least on paper but most of them were in maiden breaking efforts and it's oftentimes hard for horses to repeat those big maiden efforts efforts in a stakes race next out so let's talk through a couple of those ones that i'm a little bit interested in uh let's start off with the 
the 11 quiet side. Uh, ran that 80 in the maiden break for John Ortiz. Another barn that's absolutely been on fire. He's 56% on the meat, 5 of 9. Uh, you know, Louis stays put here. Horse was very impressive, 1 by 6 and a quarter. Um, and, you know, has shown that, uh, which is something that a lot of these don't, this horse can pass other horses. Didn't break on top and just wire a field. You know, she had to break behind others, uh, stalked for a bit, and then just took over top of the lane. So really impressive race from her, and I think she's, you know, a major player in here. Just drawn to her inside is another horse that I'm really interested in at Bellicose. I don't think you get that 15 to 1. I think a lot of people are going to see what I'm seeing, which is that Jeremiah's Barnes really, you know, really firing well. Uh, she has every step you know, every right to take a step forward off that last race. And I think it's really interesting that she could have won or run last week in the Seeking the Annie. They scratched out of that state bred restricted race here and they're running her instead in open company. To me, that's a sign of confidence from Jeremiah. It's, uh, you know, she is the New York bred in here, um, but uh, I think it's really interesting that they chose this spot over what she, you know, would have been a much easier spot for her last week. Um, and, and I really like her in here. I think she'll take some money. You probably get more in that 8 to 1, 10 to 1 range on her, but she's a very interesting player in this race. Um, one other, just to the inside, I also, it seems like I like all the outside horses, which is kind of weird, but uh, I like Strong State a fair bit in here as well. For Al Stahl, another person who's been having a phenomenally good meet, Arad stays put on this one. It looked like Arad had some choice. Um, you know, she got it done last time out in what was a kind of a merry-go or merry-go-round affair. Uh, you know, she was always in the lead. Um, in you know, got it done. She looked a little green, but, uh, you know, she, and she'll definitely have to pass horses here because she's not going to end up breaking on top, but she's the type that, again, you know, Al's horses tend to kind of get better after a couple of races. Wouldn't be a shocker if she takes another step forward here and, uh, you know, is a major player in this affair. And, and I think the little bit of the stretch out probably helps her. Uh, I think she's a horse that probably wanted to go or wants to go a touch further. Other horse that I'm a little interested in here is the one horse immersive for the Brad Cox barn. Um, she was, uh, you know, again, another one of these that has passed other horses, shown that she can do that. These Cox horses are always good. Um, you know, Manny stays put on this one. And I think a lot of people see Manny and they're like, eh, it's Manny. But the thing is, uh, Brad goes with all of his good stuff to Manny. Uh, they're 30% together, which is absolutely, you know, a filthy statistic with a positive ROI. And I think it's interesting. Uh, Brad Cox last out maiden breakers going into st uh, stakes company next out. He's 29%, 10 for 34 um, with a $2.23 sent ROI. So positive ROI over the last five years with this move, Maiden Breaker last out going into stakes in the next start. Um, and, and I think that's that's a you know pretty interesting stat. You probably get around that eight to one sort of line. And I think that's more than fair on immersive. So uh, you know I think I want Queen's MG on the top and then I want a little bit of one, nine, 10 and 11 underneath. So race 12 is the Flower Bowl, Bowl the return of Warlike Goddess, uh, I should say the return of the return of the return. Uh, she ran up here in the New York, and uh, you know that was on the Belmont Stakes weekend. I uh, had a, ran a nice third, uh, you know, getting up you know, kind of, you know, trying to get up late for, for that third place finish. Um, got beat by Didia that day. And, uh, you know, going that trip, Didia is just kind of the best of this class right now or the best of this group. Uh, you know, I, I think she's, Warlike Goddess is a major player in here, but you have to kind of go, she's seven now. She's really good. She's extremely talented. I'm not going to argue that, but you sort of wonder if she's going to start slowing down a little bit. Um, and there's some other faces in here. I think she takes a ton of money in this spot, just given she's such a known commodity and she's always run well at Saratoga. But I think there are some other interesting places to go. If she's, you know, two to one, she's bettable. If she goes off at, you know, even money or six to five, which it wouldn't shock me if she does, I think she's the kind of horse you want to fade in this, uh, in this affair. And sorry to say that right. Dave. Um, the other horses that I was a little bit interested in here, 
first off, McCulloch, the obvious other horse, uh, winner of the Guns Falls and comes back in this spot. Um, you know, she's, uh, you know, three of six across the Saratoga Circuit uh, and has one half of her races go on this trip. She's really good. She's been in really good form. Um, similar sort of running style to Warlike Goddess, um, but, uh, you know, one of these sort of others in here that makes, makes a lot of sense, and I'm going to be using Warlike Goddess and McCulloch as A's, couple other horses I want underneath. Um, I'll use somebody like a Parnak, uh, realizing that, uh, you know, I know Parnak hasn't hasn't put one together. Uh, well, I guess it's technically your defending champion in this race. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the races since then have been a little ugly, although that Glens Falls was a much better effort. So I wonder if Clement kind of has this one figured out and you're getting the white hot Dylan Davis up. So, uh, you know, nothing wrong there. Um, I thought Millie Girl, the five, also interesting. Another one of these that uh, does not have a ton of wins across turf. Uh, most of her best stuff has come at Woodbine running across synthetic. Uh, but, you know, she does have some figures that fit in here and, uh, you know, has a pedigree that says that this longer trip might kind of, uh, might be a good one for her. So, um, you know, I, I think she's an interesting outsider. Maybe she's the kind of horse that clunks up and, you know, finishes for third in your trifecta. And then one other I wanted to talk in here uh, is Nisi Marie, who uh, a number of us have been chasing for quite a while. They're stretching her out, um, you know, but I thought her, uh, you know, her Beverly D was a real good race. And it seemed like, they, you know, I didn't think she would necessarily love being stretched out, but that wasn't a bad effort. So maybe they're going to stretch her out a little further and, uh, you know, and we'll find another gear and maybe maybe she really has wanted to do this all along. Um, Pedery doesn't scream it, but uh, pretty good horse and, you know, figures fit enough that, uh, that she has some upside. Again, I think she's probably running for maybe second or third at best. Uh, I think the race really kind of goes through either McCulloch or Warlike Goddess, but if you uh, you know have deeper tickets, she's one. Those you know those are the kind of other horses that I'm looking at who uh, who you might want to include. So uh, you know, as I said, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you like this kind of stakes highlight action in a little bit uh, shorter form. Maybe I'll do some more of these for everybody. And uh, good luck at the races on closing weekend of Saratoga.